Do you wanna make $10,000 a month with your laser, but you don't wanna sell at craft shows or on Etsy? We'll show you how to do it right now. What is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do it, build it, or make it? So do we. And we have new videos each week. Not everyone that buys a laser wants to sell at craft shows. They don't wanna sell on Etsy, but they still wanna make some money. Another great way to pay off your laser is through B2B sales or corporate gifts and awards. With a little networking and marketing, this is a great income stream. Step one, how to find the business. This is where you're gonna put some of your networking skills to work. It's not always about saying the most, saying it the loudest, or meeting the most people. You don't even have to be an extrovert, but you do have to show up and you have to be consistent. We recommend joining local networking groups such as your local BNI chapter, Chamber of Commerce, Small Business Association, realtor groups. And you know realtors know everybody. <laughs> this is a great opportunity to network with other business owners. And it's not about showing up to one event, handing out a few business cards. It's about showing up month after month and building the relationships. You don't have to be the loudest or have the most to say. Just be there, be a consistent figure meet a few people month after month and build the relationships. Once they start seeing your face, they're gonna trust that you're gonna be there. And when they have an opportunity for you, they will already know you and they'll feel comfortable reaching out and asking if you can provide the services they're looking for. You show up at one event and you're just gonna be some laser person. You show up at every event and you're gonna be the laser person. And it's not always about who you know, it's about who knows you. So this week's project is a referral order from our neighbor for our corporate race medals. So we're gonna create some race medals, but we thought we would share a little bit about how we got that business and how the process is going to work. Our business neighbor next door runs a screen printing business. He was asked to create some t-shirts for an upcoming 5K. When the race coordinator asked if he had anyone he knew that could help with race medals, he reached out and referred the business to us to create the race medals. And that came through networking, working with him uh, on a couple of other jobs, just getting to know my neighbor and letting him know what we do. We know that he's a screen printer and he's created t-shirts for us. He knows that we're a laser business and we can create custom corporate gifts. He also knows we do our door hangers. So they reached out and asked if we could help do or create race medals for the upcoming race. This week's video, we thought we would walk through the process of creating those medals how we got the business, how we went through the mock-ups and the design process, and ultimately how we batched out the production. And how to continue getting this type of income stream. And remember, it's not always about who you know, it's about who knows you. Step two, making estimates. We were asked for pricing, and I don't like to give prices for just one option. It's very limiting, they could say no. So what we like to do is we like to come in with a good, a better, a best, and then a wow. So for our good option, we chose one layer with some engraving, no color. Our better option was two layer, one color. Best was gonna be multi-layer, multi-color. And then our wow. Was gonna be mirrored acrylic, multi-layer, multi-color. That was a wow. <laughs> we also threw in a little design time. We knew we were going to have to design this race medal for her. Uh, there were a couple of requests in there, so we threw in $40 an hour for design time. Some options to consider during pricing is, who are you selling this to? Are you selling it directly to the business? In our case, we knew we would be selling these medals to our neighbor, and our neighbor was going to be selling them to the business. So we offered our neighbor wholesale pricing which is typically time, materials, and then a small markup. Now for our prices at each level, good, better, best, and wow, we took the cost of materials, plus our labor, plus the laser time, and then times that by our markup. So there's different types of pricing. You have to kind of keep those things in mind. In this case, we provided a small markup as a wholesale markup because we knew that our neighbor was going to provide a small markup as his referral fee and then charge the business. You don't always have to do that, but in this case, we knew this was gonna change hands twice and we need to leave a little profit in there built in for ourselves 
as well as our neighbor. This is also great ethos because next time he has a job like this, he'll be more likely to refer us as well as the corporate business. If we provide good service, they may reach out to us directly and we wouldn't have to provide maybe that wholesale pricing next time. I definitely like to leave enough meat on the bones so that everybody's satisfied and they have no problem coming back and bringing us some more meat. In this case, we did the materials, labor, laser time, times two. Now you could do that times two and a half for a bulk order or times three if it's more retail or corporate pricing. Step three, design time. Now we allotted for two hours of design time in our estimate. So we started by gathering some requirements, what their colors were, what the size was. Then we jumped over to Google and we did some creeping. We creeped <laughs> their Facebook. We looked at some of their old posts. We looked at their past year's medals just to see what other people have provided to them. That way we would have a better idea of what she might be expecting uh, for our design. We also talked a little bit about this year is the 100th anniversary of the FD Crockett boat, and that needed to be in the design of this medal. Well, that was a little bit of a challenge, but Garrett was up for it and came up with some good ideas. And we did a little back and forth. So first designs weren't perfect. Uh, the first design we had really featured their logo and emblem, and that is not really what she was looking for. So we did a little rework um, and really highlighted the boat in this year's medal and 5K on there. That was really all she was looking for, and Garrett created a couple of a two-layer medal with some cutouts that gave her uh, the features, highlighted the features she wanted, but also uh, added room for color in the background so that we could use that same design for a first, second, third place medal. To get some good starting points for our medals, I jumped into Canva and I just pulled down some quick circle logos and stuff like that to get me going with some shapes and some ideas, especially like a boat logo. I had no idea how to incorporate a boat into this metal. So that's how I started to get a base to work with. Uh, the next thing I did is I reached back out to the customer. I asked for some high resolution images. The images that they provided first were very low resolution and they looked pixelated anytime I tried to image trace them or anything, they'd come out really trashy. They were able to provide some really nice high resolution EPSs, which definitely made my job a whole lot easier and really helped us stick closer to that two hours that we initially estimated. The other challenge that we had or uh, request was included a, a kid's medal and an adult medal. So we had to and keep the boat incorporated in both. <laughs> in both. <laughs> so Garrett came up with a few cute ideas. I think one of them actually had like a Disney spin on it and they were like, no, this nope. looks like Disney. Too Disney, yeah. <laughs> so we did come to an agreed upon little race medal with some kids racing. Uh, and then for the kids medal, she actually wanted to know, this kind of came later as an afterthought requirement, which was easy for us to do, could we add the kids' names? If they had the first 50 kids that got registered, could we include their names on the race medal? We already had 2024 at the bottom. We just removed 2024 and put the kids' name on there, added 2024 as a little side tag on the paracord, and it worked out great. But having close communication with your customer helps head off things like that early on. So we were able to catch that and make adjustments for that while we were still designing. It didn't take while the things were on the laser before <laughs> everybody said, oh no, we need kids' names. So close communication and provide a good enough mock-up so that they'd actually be able to get a good feel for what it is. Step four, production. We went ahead and made a sample. We got approval from the customer and making that sample really helped us identify how we would be able to make this into a process. So the best way to do 500 of something <laughs> is to create a process that will keep you organized and on track. And to do that, we created a batch engraving. We knew we were gonna engrave and cut many of them at one time. We also created some jigs for assembly so that we knew we could glue them together fast and quickly 
and easily, and nothing was going to end up crooked. I mean, making a jig makes them almost mindless. You put it in the jig, you glue it, you put it in the jig. <laughs> Done. One of the things our lessons learned from this event was during the engrave process, this actually happened, two different things happened. Once during the engrave process, uh, a fuse box, a breaker blew, and the engrave stopped. And then when we turned it back on, it didn't pick back up where it would uh, where it, it left off. It usually does pick up where it leaves off. But it does. For some reason, it didn't give me that option. It did not. And we were probably halfway through uh, a large engrave. 68. And so how many were on a row? Six uh, On a row, 12 per row. And I think there was five rows. And so we lost um, at least 12 of them. Like it had completed one row and it was, was in the, the model, time. in the middle of 12 more. So after an hour and a half, it, it, it ended and we lost 12 of those medals. So what we learned, and a little tip for you, is in Lightburn, we chose to do an engrave and cut each individual medal. They were all still in one file. All 66 medals were in there but it would engrave one and cut it, engrave one and cut it. So inside of our optimization settings, we went ahead and selected group, prioritized by group. And that way it will engrave and then cut each grouped item. So each metal was its own group. And so it engraved each group uh, sequentially. Now, so that was great. So the next time we actually lost power, uh, what happened then? Was it? Uh... Yep, uh, same fuse blew. Oh. <laughs> but this time, when we when we powered it back on, it was able to pick up right where it let, left off. Did it? It didn't quite didn't quite line up, right? And we had to like adjust oh. it a little bit, but we only lost one, right? I, I believe that was a different time <laughs> where we were using it on the slats, and one of the pieces of the metal, oh, that's the what tab, it was. didn't catch or whatever and a little piece of the wood popped up and the head caught it and scooted the board just Ever a smidge. Ever so slightly. <laughs> just a smidge. <laughs> but luckily we were watching it and saw that it wasn't lining up. We, Garrett said, you're never gonna adjust it back in its perfect never position. Never gonna happen. And I did. I was like, just <laughs> let me try. And I nudged it back and it completed the circle perfectly. It did, I was <laughs> impressed. But we only, that in that case, that was on the second one. It started back up. It didn't finish the first one. Um, I fixed the second one. It did complete that one okay. We only lost one in that round, yeah. so. And that was great. So just a little little lesson learned for me to you. Um, what is it? Optimize settings? Optimize settings, prioritize by group. A little light burn tip for you. Step five. Wait. Uh, let me go get your, let me go get the metal. Step Five, delivery. Now this is where you keep this income stream moving. You have to exceed expectation and meet or beat deadlines. It's all about networking and being there and showing up and being consistent. So we've provided the medals, we provided them ahead of schedule, and next year she's likely to give us a call back and ask us to create 500 medals for next year's race. I think they all turned out a pretty cool. I'm impressed with each of them. I mean, mm -hmm. they're pretty easy to do. Got it. gold backers, green backers. Yep, silver backers. Mm -hmm. The kids got some red backers. These are all the ones that have been left over. Yeah. So these are now ours. I. That's a bonus. Look, you get to keep a little bit of everything you make. So now I am first, second, and third at the Deltaville nope, 5K. I'm first. I'll be first. Oh. <laughs> All right, well, I am now second, and I was part of the kids' fun run. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are about out of time, so if you're not gonna join us for the patron after show, we will see you and next week where we'll do it, build it, and make it again. A big thanks to all of our patrons. You know we love you guys, and that is the best way to support this channel. Join us over on Patreon where you get some free files, you get some free content, super secret Facebook group, classes every month, a ton of stuff, but it's really all about the community. Those are the best people in the world right there. <laughs> and we will see you next week. We also, sorry.
We also have a well-established relationship. We work best with. We also have a well-established relationship. They know what we can do. We've worked with them before, so they weren't afraid to offer us, refer us. <clears throat> yeah, mm -hmm. and referrals are huge in this business. Yeah. yeah. I forgot what I was saying. Um, we've worked with them before. Yeah. We have a. <clears throat> We have an established work history. They know what we're capable of. I know, me too. You just want to do that whole thing again. Yeah. <laughs>